Yo YouTube, it's your bro Yo Elliot here, back with another video, this time for you guys that are out there in the sexual marketplace. So you guys who are out there dating, meeting women, doing the pool pickup artist thing, trying to get girlfriends, trying to get laid, whatever it is that you do out there when you're young and bucking and trying to fuck. So today I spent some time uh, on my phone while I was taking a shit and I was looking through some of the news stories of the day, and one came up that made me think of y'all immediately, so I wanted to share it with you. It's a, it's a study, a dating study that was published in the Atlantic News Magazine, and uh, the title goes, At What Age Are Men Most Desirable to Women? Something to that effect. And uh, I thought this was interesting because recently I had been uh, subscribing to and reading and listening to a lot of the guys in the red pill uh, MGTOW community. And this is definitely one of those topics that was enlightening to me when I first discovered it. You know, of course, I've been married for 16 years and I've been in a monogamous relationship for you know almost two decades. So uh, I haven't really looked out there too much, but when I opened my eyes, particularly because you guys asked me questions uh, to what's going on outside in the sexual marketplace, SMP, which is a new term I actually learned. I'll tell you a little bit about where I learned that term and where you should go learn some more terms about how to be out there winning in the sexual marketplace. Uh, my eyes were open to a tremendous amount of things that I was completely ignorant of, uh, given that I haven't really been out there in the sexual marketplace. And one of them uh, is discussed in this, in this article here. And, uh, you know, the article itself was okay. You know, most of the beginning of the article was about uh, people's uh, mating preferences based on how they swipe in online dating. You know, what kind of people are men, what kind of men are women looking for and what are men looking for in women. But then it really started to break down the, uh, the intricacies of that. And it began towards the end of the article. And I'll put a link down below so you can take, take a look. It starts bullet pointing some of the findings you get past all the opinion you get right to the science and there's a beautiful chart here down at the uh midpoint of the article where it goes how uh, how age affects online dating desirability among heterosexual men and women and what you see here with this graph is huge is a huge has a lot of implications and, uh, and I've actually seen this before, but in a very different way. And I'm going to show you where I saw it first. But I thought this was interesting because it's a sort of a contemporary study where you can just take a brief look, a quick look at this. And you see that from the age of 20 all the way down to the left there, uh, women at the top, they're, they're, there's a quick decline. There's a sharp decline in their desirability rank. So, you know, I'm not going to get into the details of women's desirability, but I will get into the details of men's desirability, meaning what women find desirable in men, because, hey, that's what we're about. Uh, you see, it's just, it just, it's just a downward hill slope, rapid decline from age 20, uh, you know, throughout 30, 40, 50, 60, and it just keeps, just keeps going down with regard to women. So that's, that is what it is with regard to women, but what I found really fascinating, what I think is really empowering, what I think is really important for you guys to know who are out there in the sexual marketplace is that in your 20s, you may start low. But as you take a look at that graph, you start moving up towards your 50s, 50s and, uh, and so forth. Uh, well into the 60s, you know, the, the decline is, it begins very slowly after 50 and 60. And there are a ton of implications with regard to sexual dynamics that I'll talk briefly about in this video that this chart highlights and points out. Uh, but it also, what I'm most excited about is the fact that, you know, many of you guys are in your 20s that watch my videos and, uh, you know, you're struggling with women out there. What's really good to know is that it can only go up from here for you. It can only get better from here for you. And, uh, and it's not the case for women. And so what happens is, as you increase in age and your sexual market value goes up, your options begin to expand. Where women, when they're younger, their options are huge, right? They, it's just the way it is. Biology sets us up this way. There's no judgment about it. Their desirability is huge, but then quickly begins to deteriorate. And there is a, uh, there is a biological 
psychosocial term that I learned uh, that kind of dictates how a woman's going to act based on this innate knowledge that you know they've got a they've got a, a quick period there where they're desirable and then it just starts going down uh, and they've got to do something about it called hypergamy. And those of you guys who are in the red pill uh, community, you probably know what I'm talking about. And I'll and I'll talk about it briefly here in this video because there's a lot of good stuff. Uh, just scrolling down through the rest of this article, um, there are a few other things that I wanted to to point out. A lot of it is just is BS. Uh, women's prospects dim. This is an interesting point from the study. Women's prospects dim not only as they age, but as they achieve the highest level of education. That is according to the study. So uh, the quote goes, uh, a, a more educated man is almost always more desirable on average. Keep getting smart, dudes. Men with postgraduate degrees outperform men with bachelor's degrees. Men's with bachelor's degrees beat high school graduates all the time. Uh, that has a lot to do with the term hypergamy that I mentioned before, where women are looking for a particular type of stable man, uh, a type of man that can provide, a provisioner. And so, you know, traditionally, men with these degrees are better provisioners. So it works out that way. But then it goes on to say, but for women, an undergraduate degree is most desirable. The study says postgraduate education is associated with decreased desirability among women. And uh, I don't think today is the day or the video that I'm going to say why I think that's the case. But you could do a little bit of research and I'm going to give you some research as, uh, resources as to why that might be the case. So uh, interesting thing for you guys to know, women to know also too, you know, because uh, you might want to be desirable. <laughs> okay, so, uh, and then it goes, it gives a chart, how education affects online dating desirability amongst heterosexual men and women. Uh, here's another one that I thought was really interesting before I move on. Uh, men did not find more success when they sent happy messages. <laughs> Whoa, what does that mean? So we're going to go on. Across all four cities, men tended to use less positive language when, me when uh, messaging more desirable women. They may have stumbled upon the strategy, though, through trial and error, because in all four cities, men experience slightly lower uh, reply rates when they write more desire, uh, more positively worded messages to women. So um, it's one of these things where women like the asshole, right? I mean, it's based on a study here. Men did not find more success when they sent happy messages. Women don't seem to respond to happy-go-lucky positive guys. Uh, and this has just been a something that I'm learning, again, because I'm not an expert in any of this. I, I found my woman, and it's worked real well, and it continued to work real well, and we have a great relationship all these years, so none of this has really been of any great interest or need to me but as i look out there and as i speak with many of you guys and as i do my research i'm finding that yeah this whole many of the adages out there that aren't aren't nice to hear turn out to be true time after time and also there's a really good biological reason why and um and i'll talk about that briefly also too so uh yeah well Women actually seem to like guys that are a little bit no, more uh, negative, it seems. Less positive, anyway. And, uh, and so on and so forth. The rest of the article is just fluff. But I thought those studies were really interesting. And, uh, and what, looking at that chart was really interesting for you. And you'll see that I'll do my best here to, to link it up for you. But um, that's not the first time I saw that chart. And it's not the first time I c came across this concept. Uh, many of you have may, may be familiar with the work of Rollo Tomasi. And I'm going to show you. Right now, a resource that I totally, totally, totally recommend every man, no matter what age or where you are in the sexual marketplace, even if you're married, this has been of tremendous value and a, a tremendous resource to me. And um, what Tomasi, who you can read more of his work on the rationalmaleblog.com, uh, I did an interview with him and several other red pill guys just a few weeks ago. I'll put that up. Um, and, and, you know, if you're into... MGTOWN, things of that nature, you probably know who he is, but those of you guys who are not familiar, I recommend check out his stuff, particularly his book series, The Rational Male. This is the second book of the three. And in this book, 
it's going to be difficult for you to see here, and I don't want to, you know, copyright his stuff here, but uh, I invite you to take a look at the book itself. He put a timeline very similar to, the, to, to what we see in that chart right there, except what Tomasi does, who, by the way, he's a clinical psychologist, I believe, and a very, very scientific guy. I think that's why he calls his book Rational Male. I'm more of an intuitive male, <laughs> if you will. Uh, but I really appreciate it and love people who put the rationale behind of a lot of the things I instinctively know. And so I'm going to briefly just describe the various different stages that women go through uh, and, and men to a degree. Uh, but this is really about understanding women um, based on their age. And, um, and before I go into this, you know, he does a really good job of being very uh, objective and using biology and you know if you haven't heard the term hypergamy before which you probably haven't because it's not a word that the mainstream media wants you to know uh he talks a little bit about it in this book but i I'd, I'd tell you to go take a look do some research on what hypergamy is and in brief let me see if i can find there was a really good paragraph here that was uh the kind of summed up hypergamy but it, it goes about a lot deeper it's it's biology, it's nature, it's innate, it's in our DNA, it's the way women are. And men and women are different. I don't care how you, what, what kind of characters you put on the bathroom door to say that we're the same. Uh, we're different, we're very different. And it's good that way, it's cool that way. We came here to figure ourselves out by being different. If we were the same, it'd be fucking boring. Anyway, from uh, ages 15 to 20, uh, 15 to 20, physicality is very important with regard to what women are uh, attracted to. Uh, 20 through 25, they're in their party years. By age 23, according to Tomasi, a woman has reached her sexual market value, meaning like a woman is at her peak in desirability, you know, men finding them desirable at about 23. This study, I think, says something to the effect of 25, but r roughly around that, 25, those are the party years, 20 through like uh, the, the, the late 20s. And, um, and right after that, they move into a different phase. But during this phase, what you need to understand is that women are really interested in what uh, Tomasi and the guys in this, uh, in the manosphere call alpha fucks. They're very, it's very much physical. And I understand a lot of you guys out there who aren't uh, getting, you're not alpha in the way that, it's typically described and you're not getting fucked. You know, the, the alpha fuck thing just ain't working for you. You're a young man and women are out there looking for alpha fucks. But an interesting thing happens towards the end of their 20s, moving into their 30s. They, they reach an epiphany and a transition phase where they start looking for beta bucks. And this is where women have come to the realization that their sexual market value is declining rapidly. And if they don't have children yet, they don't have a provisioner or provider yet. Uh, the epiphany that uh, he calls competition anxiety steps in and all of a sudden start looking for a man that can provide for them. So the alpha fuck stuff kind of goes out the window. You know, the hot guy at the uh, at, at spring break is not going to give her what she needs when she reaches this phase because she's looking to settle down and provide, have children. It's just innate. It's natural. It's in their biology. Uh, they're, they're looking for security up through their 30s, late 30s, 40s. There is a reinterest in uh, alpha alpha fucking so a lot of women I, a lot of women go to strength camp and I see them you know in their late in their 40s and whatnot they redevelop themselves you know they uh, maybe they were doing the alpha fuck thing when they were in their 20s then they baited down some dude and uh, got the provisioning going on for them and, uh, and maybe they have a few children and then you know once they realize yeah, this, this this beta buck ain't who I want to fuck uh, they start redeveloping themselves uh, late 30s 40s and they have this alpha reinterest, um, and you know, hopefully things work out for them that way. You know, a lot of divorces happen at that time, and uh, and really, what women are wanting long term, according to Tomasi in this book, also, is uh, is both in one man, and that's just a, that's that's one piece that I would offer you guys out there too that are looking to develop yourselves. Don't think of it in terms of yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be hot, I'm gonna have uh, have a lot of women that way because there's a phase for you, there's a time for you, there's an interest. D developmental stage for you. 
Uh, but then there also comes the time when you, uh, you're you most desirable because of your provisional capacities, your ability to provide and to protect. So uh, what is really wanted from women and really what we can hope to reach for ourselves is, uh, is to have both in one vessel, to be that alpha fuck, but also the provisioner that uh, women want. So anyway... I am not an expert on this topic, nor do I claim to be, but I'm interested in it because I'm interested in you and I love you. So I look at the things that you're interested in learning more about. So with that being said, I don't get an endorsement for Tomas, Tomasi's book, um, but I highly, highly recommend it. I've actually sent it to a couple friends after a friend sent it to me. And, um, and like I said, I'm not in the sexual marketplace, so I'm not looking for pickup advice, but this is an objective look at sexual dynamics. Super important. One last thing. I'm starting a podcast, y'all. Y'all have been asking me to do a podcast probably since 2013. Uh, I've been through various stages of Yo Elliot, the dumb, and, uh, <laughs> and I'm developing the next phase, and it's going to be this long-form podcast style. And that, with that, uh, I'm, I've already invited Rollo to come on the show to speak with you guys about red pill awareness done. Yo, Elliot!